Now that you're familiar with the types of models to choose from, we need to feed in high quality training data for them to learn. That's the learn part of machine learning. Machine is the tool or algorithm like linear regression, and the learning is the insights that the model has into the relationships between the known and unknown data. That's why we call it modeling. You're trying to approximate reality based on what you do know. The best way I've found to learn the key concepts of machine learning on structured data sets is with this quick example. Here, our scenario will be predicting customer lifetime value with a model. Lifetime value, or LTV, is a common metric in marketing, which is where we'll estimate how much revenue or profit we can expect from a customer given their history or customers with similar patterns. The data set that we'll use is a Google Analytics e-commerce data set on Google's very own online merchandise store that sells swag like t-shirts and other products that you see listed here. Our goal is to target high value customers with special promotions and incentives. After exploring the available data, we came up with a few fields that we thought might be useful to the model in determining whether or not a customer is high value based on their behavior with our website. These fields include how many lifetime page views, how many total visits, what's the average time that they spend on our site, and what the total revenue that they've brought in is, and the count of their previous transactions with us on our site. Now that we have some data, and note, we'll need a lot more than just the seven records that you see here, it'd be more like on the order of tens of thousands, then we can get ready to feed it into our model. But before we do, we need to define our data in columns in the language that data scientists and other ML professionals use. Taking the e-commerce example we had in the previous lesson, a record or a row is an instance or an observation. In this picture that you see here, we have eight instances. A label is the correct answer that's known historically, like how much this particular customer spent. And that's the field that's in the future data is unknown or missing hence the model of training and prediction. For example, if we know that a customer who has made transactions in the past spends a lot of time on our website, often turns out to have a high LTV for revenue, we could predict the same for newer customers who are on that same spending trajectory. Here we're forecasting a number. So do you remember which model type we should use? If you set a linear regression as a starting point, that's exactly right. Now notice how I didn't say that if transactions are greater than 10 for this row, then you could expect the revenue to be greater than 1,000. Remember that in an ML, we feed in columns of data and then let the model figure out the relationship to best predict that label. It may even turn out that some of the columns were not useful at all to the model in predicting the outcome. And I'll show you how you can find this out later by inspecting what the model actually learned. Labels could also be binary values like if they're a high value customer or not, as shown here. Knowing the what you're trying to predict, the class, the number, again, that'll greatly influence the type of model that you're gonna choose. So we've got our label field there on the right as high value customer or not. So what do we call all these other data columns in our table? Those columns are called features or potential features at least. Those are our inputs to the model. Each column of data is like a cooking ingredient that you can use from your kitchen pantry. As my young daughter often finds out, cooking with all of the ingredients can often spoil your dinner. It's the process of feature engineering, you gotta whittle it down. Now that sifting process where you're going through your data, that's where you can expect to spend the majority of your time as a data analyst, engineer, or even a data scientist. And it's an art form as much as it is a science. Understanding the quality of the data in each column and working with other teams to get more features or more history is often the hardest part of any ML project. You could even combine or transform these features in a process called feature engineering. It sounds fancy, right? Well, if you've ever created calculated fields in SQL, like combining columns together, you've just done some basic feature engineering. Also, BigQuery ML does a lot of the hard work for you, like automatic one-hot encoding of categorical variables, and things like splitting your data set into training and evaluation automatically, too. Let's talk now about predicting on future data. Say some new data comes in that you don't have a label for. 
you don't know whether or not these new customers will have a high LTV or not. But you do have a rich history of labeled examples for your model to train on. So we can train a model on the known data up top, and then once trained and we're happy with the model's performance, we can then use it to predict on that bottom set of data, that unknown data.